Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Uh, for today's weekend review, lots of rugby action over the weekend and uh, very, very exciting um, to see international rugby back. And 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 we saw it in some of the best um, games that I've seen in a long time in terms of them being close, in terms of potentially going either way, upsets um, around potential upsets um, as well. And it's, it's so refreshing to see um, international rugby in a good space, a competitive space, because we spoke about uh, last year being the most competitive World Cup ever in terms of teams being so close, you know, um, semifinals and quarterfinals, for example, um, that, you know, could have gone either way. For it. And, uh, you know, it's been cool to see that for after that, we've continued to have that sort of, um, that, that, uh, competitiveness and we're going to go through some of the results talk about some of the games because we're talking about a new era um of uh, of international rugby and i think it's going to be very interesting to see what the rugby powerhouses do and who are the new rugby powerhouses in four years time come the 12 three years time come the 2027 rugby world cup before we look at some of the results please do smash a like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well it all started on uh, Friday, uh, which was very early in the morning, if you're in South Africa like me, where Samoa beat Italy. And uh, it wasn't a bad Italian side as well. You know, it wasn't like it was an Italy B side. It was the Italian side. Uh, this is an interesting result. And it shows you kind of the issue that Italy have, don't, isn't it? You know, I, I'm a massive fan of Italy. And I think that they have got the potential to become a really good side. Until they start becoming a side that can consistently beat Samoas, your Fijis, your Georgias, and now start to really contend, you know, with your whales, even your Australias, for example, your Argentinas. Um, I mean, Argentina is such a uh, bit of a maverick side. You know, one day they're, they're, they're untouchable, the next day they can lose to anyone, really. Um, but um, that's kind of the issue with Italy, with Italy rugby. But Samoa, who's really got, I think, for three years to really step up, very interesting to see how the eligibility laws, um, you know, we saw so many much, um, players returning back to playing for like, the likes of Samoa, a Fiji, for example, a Tonga, and lots of stars returning back to their sort of their, 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 their countries of origin or the countries of birth even at some time. So that's a very cool result to get the weekend over. Um, Fiji beating Georgia 21 points to 12. Georgia continue to be competitive. And, and I'm really hoping that they take some big steps forward in, in the coming years um, because we want to see rugby in a situation where, yes, there will always be your four to six, hopefully eight teams, which are like in the top of the world. That's kind of what we see in football. You know, we see like eight teams, where there's very little between them. Um, and we want to see more of that. You know what? You want to see all six nations being strong. You want to see all four nations of the rugby championship being strong. You then want to see a Fiji being strong, a Georgia being strong. Um, and, and so when it comes to World Cups, you know, it's not, you know, a foregoing conclusion that we know who our quarterfinals, semifinals are before the tournament. And the likes of Fiji, Georgia, Samoa, even in Italy to a certain degree, their preparation is very interna- uh, very important. Uh, it was an almost international game yesterday. Australia beat Fiji 50, 64 points to five. Um that's always kind of the issue when it comes to these tier, tier, tier two nations. It's from a funny point of view as well. Women's rugby is going to take a long time to catch up. We're having the same issue in, in, in South Africa. I mean, our men's side is the best team in the world. Our women's side, you know, has to punch above its weight. But at the moment, having to do a whole revamp of it and uh, be interesting to see how women's rugby itself, which is really posed to explode over the next few years, um, is, is going to go. Um, if you look at then uh, USA going down to Romania, kind of almost a bit of expected result. Romania looking to try and kick on from their World Cup last year. New Zealand be- beating England by one point. This is a game that could have gone either way. And uh, a game which I think a lot of people are going to look into quite a lot. And I think it's going to be a very interesting to see, compare this game to next weekend's game. It was the first game under Scott Robertson. And it kind of looked like that. At times, New Zealand looked very much like the All Blacks of old. Um but at times, England, you know, were on top. And a different day, Marcus Smoot laces up a different pair of boots and gets his kicking boots on. Um, England win that match. So it was almost a nightmare start for Scott Robertson. Um, he has gone away with this, but uh, England will be kicking themselves because it, the All Blacks were there for the taking. The mark of a good team, though, is to be able to win when you don't play well. I always say that, and I think that's what kind of New Zealand did. Not that they didn't play, not to say that didn't play well, but they could have been a lot better. And very interesting to see the improvement we might see in a week's time. I also think Steve Borthwick will be very happy looking at his England side and seeing progress. I think they are starting to play better rugby. Um, I think Marcus Smith yesterday just, just wasn't really on it with his uh, for, for kicking for poles, but generally his, his play in general wasn't bad. Um, Chandler Cunningham himself is a proper, proper player. There were a couple of nice performances yesterday from from the, the, the English lads, but uh, generally that New Zealand side will look at that and go, mm, and that's not quite the standard we want to be at. Um, Japan beating the Maori All Blacks. 
over there. And then this is a very interesting game. Australia versus Wales. We're talking about two teams who are a shadow of their former selves. The Joe Schmidt era began with a win and uh, some individual brilliance, by the way, um, from uh, Wright. I mean, that, that try is is ludicrous. And Tom Wright has had no, no um, right to score for there. It's a brilliant individual try. But I also thought Wales at times played really, really nicely. And... You know, Warren Gatlin's getting a lot of flack, and I think he deserves some to a certain degree for his selection, but there are some nice players in there. He continues to struggle at scrum time, and I think that's a big issue. Everybody talks about the fact that, you know, he's continually picking props that aren't good enough scrummages, and they just have no sort of set-piece to attack from. But in the sort of general play, um, you know, the Ben Thomas looks a nice player. Ellis Bellman's look pretty good at, uh, at international level, so that's a nice little halfback pairing coming up. Um, you know, I think that the centre pairing is going to take a bit of time. I think Mason Grady will take time to adjust, but I think he's going to be a special player. Um, Liam Williams continues to be great. Uh, need to get Rio Dye into the game a bit more. I thought Aaron Wainwright was very good. Daph Jenkins still looks to me a really good player. Dewey Lake, I think if he's going to back him as captain long term, um, or as one of the captains or one of the leaders in the group, then um, I think that, um, yes, there's a lot of injuries, a lot of players missing for this Welsh start as well, which is important to to remember. Um, but, um, you know, I think that there's, there's, I think there's reason to be, I think there's, there's good reason to be hopeful as a Welsh fan. But I also think as an Australian fan, Watching the way Australia played yesterday, Joe Schmidt's going to turn this team into a competitive side. And I think that's just good news for international rugby in general. And then South Africa beating Ireland 27 points to 20. Um, an important game. That's for South Africa to make sure, first of all, that we can't lose the series. Um, some interesting words after the uh, the, the games uh, from Andy Farrell. But a bit of words on the TMOs. We'll talk about that a little bit in a separate video, which I'm going to be putting out today as well. Um, also, it's uh, interesting. This is probably, I mean, this is the side, the two sides with the most settled coaching staff. Um, after that, maybe the likes of Scotland or France. Um, but yes, there are some new additions to the South African coaching staff. But I'm very settled. South Africa, Rusty Rasmus, this one is Dion Davis, Don Human. The bulk of the coaching staff still very much the same. But we definitely saw a change in the way South Africa played last night. And what was interesting is the fact that we also saw a change within a change where at times we kind of went back to what we knew. But um, we are looking to add more sort of elements to our attack. Um, I thought that France, I mean, Ireland yesterday were un uncharacteristically bad at, at certain things. Um, apologies. Um, so I think that next week's going to be a very interesting one. And I think that uh, a scrum's going to be an interesting one because I think they're going to be giving feedback to the referees. be very keen to see how the scrum gets officiated next weekend. There were 50-50 marginal calls. Again, I'm going to talk about that in a separate video um, in terms of the TMO intervention, stuff like that. So it's going to be created a lot of hype in the week. But I generally think that South Africa, whilst they weren't at their best, were the deserved winners. I think Ireland were never, they were in the game for almost the entire game. But as a South African fan, I never felt that we were going to lose the game, if that makes any sense. Um, I felt that we were in control um, and that defensively we weren't going to concede, you know, like two late tries, for example, and I'm going to snatch it. Um, so it was interesting how that's all the last 15 minutes was just absolute chaos before that, a very tightly contested game. And I think there's lots for both sides to work on because I don't think they were either side were anyway close to their best. Which really sort of makes it exciting for doing because I think that both sides will improve. Uh, France, they beat Argentina. It is a little rotated side side from France. Baptiste Serin scoring a belt of a try as well, by the way. Uh, so the Felipe Conte Pony, they are not up to a great start, um, losing at home to France, but it's a good France side. Um, yes, maybe it's not the best side. No, Anton Dupont's nice, but France have got depth. They do have good depth. I think Argentina found that last night. I think what's exciting is that we're seeing, I mean, England still relatively new in the Borthby era. New coach for New Zealand. New coach for Australia, basically a new a new a reset yeah for Warren Gatlin in Wales, uh, a new coach for Argentina. So you know we're looking at all these different sides, and I think we're going to be very interested to see how they're going to adjust in the next year. But they've all made changes at the right sort of time. We're now all going to go into a three year journey. It'll be interesting to see how these teams progress, as well as the teams that didn't make the changes, the likes of an Ireland, Scotland, Sapphire not making too many changes, for example, to their coaching staff. Uh, England also you know into the Borthwick area sort of quite quite uh, long term now. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they sort of progress. And then the final result of the weekend, uh, the final two results, Hong Kong beat and going down to Chile and Scotland hammering Canada, which is kind of what you expect. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how the new coaches sort of go. You know, your, your Joe Schmitz, your Conte Ponies, Scott Robertson, uh, as well as how the old coaches adapt. You know, Warren Gatlin, a different sort of world start to what he had when he had when he won those Grand Slams in Wales. Let me know what you think. Which of these teams, for example, over the weekend excited you? Where is there... Uh, reason to be excitement where were the ones that caught your eye let me know down in the comments below smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel as well thank you very much for watching my name is steve i'll chat to you soon